Welcome back to End Times Prophecy News. My name is Brother Jim. Reporting here from Red State Watcher, these were the smoking gun reports about Michael Flynn. These were the smoking gun reports that very serious people just spent the last 24 hours screaming about. They proved nothing. What's interesting is the collusion between the intelligence community and the mainstream media as if they can remove President Trump from office. Here are a few excerpts from Times and CNN who receive information from unnamed sources in the deep state or shadow government. Though the Times and CNN relied exclusively on unnamed sources, both loaded up their reports with caveats from the Times. It's always unnamed sources. Yeah. The intelligence agencies then sought to learn whether the Trump campaign was colluding with the Russians on the hacking or other efforts to influence the election. The officials interviewed in recent weeks said that so far they have seen no evidence of such cooperation. It is not unusual for American businessmen to come in contact with foreign intelligence officials, sometimes unwittingly in countries like Russia and Ukraine, where the spy services are deeply embedded in society. It is also unclear whether the conversations had anything to do with Mr. Trump himself. From CNN, officials emphasized that communications between campaign staff and representatives of foreign governments are not unusual. Investigators have not reached a judgment on the intent of those conversations. These officials cautioned the Russians could have been exaggerating their access. It's always could, should have. The communications were gathered as part of a routine U.S. intelligence collection and not because people close to Trump were being targeted. And Michael Tracy tweets, tweets out, These were the smoking gun reports that very serious people just spent the last 24 hours screaming about. The Times and CNN. CNN lies and is Hitler. They got nothing. They want to blackmail our president. Either way, treason. Moving on. Keep going, liberals. Keep going. Look at President Trump's approval rating now. From Wednesday, February 15th. Today's date, the Rasmussen Reports daily presidential tracking poll for Wednesday shows that 53% of likely U.S. voters approve of President Trump's job performance, 47% disapprove. The latest figures include 37% who strongly approve of the way Trump is performing and 38% who strongly disapprove. This gives him a presidential approval index rating of minus one. Breaking news, WikiLeaks reveals possible plot against Trump from intelligence community and it's bad. WikiLeaks has retweeted a very cryptic message from alleged members of the intelligence community that could border on treason. From John Schindler, now we go nuclear. I see war going to new levels. Just got the EM former senior IC friend. It began, he will die in jail. WikiLeaks says, former NSA employee John Schindler on Real Donald Trump Archive. Now we go nuclear. I see war going to new levels. I'm not sure what they mean by I see or EM. Everything's coded, abbreviated. Hmm. He will die in jail. He's not going to go to jail. Hmm. But they're trying hard, aren't they? Did Kim Jong-un make the assassination call? Oh, I think he did. Kim Jong-un killed his own half-brother, according to Fox News foreign affairs correspondent. If he did, this isn't the first time he has done it. Oh yeah, he's killed several of his family members just for questioning him. The assassin who apprehended Kim Jong-un's half-brother was arrested at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport. She was allegedly wearing a shirt with the letters LOL. And for those of you who don't know, laughing out loud. She was laughing out loud as she stuck poison needles in the back of Kim Jong-un's back. Her and another girl, according to the first report. A woman suspected of being an assassin sent by Kim Jong-un to kill his half-brother has been arrested at the Malaysia airport where the murder happened. 
Police in Malaysia are examining footage from Kuala Lumpur International Airport to try to determine what happened during the Cold War-style poison attack on King Jam Nam on Monday morning. Grainy pictures purportedly show their main suspect, a woman in the white shirt with LOL printed on the front, standing on at the terminal waiting for a taxi. This morning, Malaysian police arrested a woman with a Vietnamese passport in the name of Don Thi Yong, born on May 31, 1988. Deputy Police Inspector General Rashid Ibrahim said the woman from Nam Dinh province was alone, adding, it is her. We recognized her from the footage and picked her up. Earlier reports suggested Jong Nam was targeted by two suspected female North Korean operatives who apparently attacked him from behind with poison spray. The 46-year-old who had branded his younger brother's regime a joke was allegedly poisoned while waiting for a flight and died on his way to a hospital. I'm amazed that two women would actually kill, assassinate in an airport. Isn't that amazing? Here she is running off for her taxi in which they actually arrested the taxi driver and caught her. A daddy-daughter Valentine's Day ballad class video just broke the internet and it's hysterical. Okay. Daddy-daughter. They're all funny. But I guess it's going to get better. can't believe it. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> it says get over there and do something. don't they? <laughs> He's got a broken arm or whatever. He's trying hard. Oh, this one's going to be funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's wearing a little ballerina outfit. Or, oh my gosh. Kids sure are showing up. On, that guy's doing pretty good. <laughs> that was funny. Trump nominee drops a bombshell and it's bad. What? Trump's nominee for Labor Secretary is expected to withdraw his nomination. David Goodman, Fox News, has learned that President Trump's pick for Labor Secretary and a Andy Puzder is expected to withdraw his nomination. President Trump's nominee to lead the Labor Department, Andy Puzder, is expected to withdraw his nomination, according to a number of reports, Wednesday. The, the Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee was scheduled to consider his nomination in a hearing that had previously been delayed five times. Top GOP members reportedly urged the White House to withdraw Puzder's nomination, according to CNN. Puzder, the CEO of the fast food conglomerate that owns the burger chain Hardee's and Carl's Jr., has been under attack by Democrats and outside groups for weeks for admitting he hired an illegal immigrant as a housekeeper and allegations that he abused his ex-wife and treated employees poorly. Let's see, he hired an illegal immigrant. Well, shouldn't they be happy? Amazing. Breaking news, California governor caught wasting 25 billion taxpayer dollars. Look what he spent it on. Apparently, the teenager, California Governor Jerry Brown, who living in an old man's suit, about 75 years old, 
was warned of the failing Oroville Dam 12 years ago. So instead of putting money towards fixing it, he spent $25 billion a year on illegals instead. How to Destroy a State in a Very Short Amount of Time by Governor Jerry Brown. The flood danger from the Oroville Dam receded Monday, but California was hit by a wave of criticism for failing to heed warnings about risk to the spillway at a time when the state spent generously on illegal immigrants and high-speed rail. California Governor Jerry Brown, a Democrat, came under fire amid reports that federal and state officials for years rebuffed or ignored calls to fortify the massive 50-year-old dam, which provides water to more than 20 million farmers and residential consumers. What's Governor Brown doing? Former State Assemblyman Tim Donnelly, a Republican, asked in a Monday post on Facebook, the same thing he's been doing for decades, obstructing progress. A radio talk show host, Mr. Donnelly, said, California has been so busy defying President Donald Trump in order to protect illegal aliens from deportation that it forgot to do the things government is supposed to do like maintain infrastructure. Governor Brown is now going hat in hand to beg the Trump administration for emergency funds. Um, it's amazing, isn't it? Anyway, I feel sorry for Californians. Pray for them. And if you live in California, we're praying for you. God bless.